May 1967. A labor dispute sparked six months of riots and bloodshed in Hong Kong. It was fueled by communist elements inspired by China's cultural revolution. 51 people, including 10 policemen, died in the violence. Though not directly aimed at the Hong Kong government's policies, the riots served as a wake-up call. It, it gave the government a shock. Yes, they retained the loyalty of the vast majority of Hong Kong people, but they wished to, to bring it out even more. It forced them to recognize the nature of changes that were occurring in Hong Kong. It forced them to recognize that they've got huge surpluses in budget. They've got to give something back. In the years that followed, social spending increased and government services expanded. The winds of change were blowing, but they also carried a foul smell. Everything you can think of was corrupt. If you were due to get housing from a demolition of squatter areas, you had to pay somebody in the housing department. I rather suspect that uh, we're getting out of hand a little in Hong Kong and the importance that we attach to this. His name was Peter Godber. He was a hero during the 67 riots. He was a good cop. He was also a bad cop. A bank in Canada informed the commissioner of police that this man had a very large sum there and that made the commissioner aware that something might be wrong. Officials were puzzled at how Godber amassed $4 million in foreign bank accounts. When questioned in 1973, Godber fled to England, was arrested, brought back, and convicted of accepting a bribe to give a promotion. Oh, good God, it's an interesting. I asked for it, my love. I know what you like. Mm. There is a distressing lack of alcohol in prison. Uh, the testimony of Ernest Taffy Hunt helped put Godber away. The flamboyant Hunt was also convicted of corruption and served a year in prison. Both emerged unrepentant. I think it was political considerations, really. I mean, Godber had fled, and they had to have a scapegoat. I think the Chinese referred to it as Taisei Guayama, am I? Well, it's very easy to use the word frame-up, of course. It has a James Cagney touch about it, but uh, I pleaded not guilty, and I still maintain that plea of not guilty. Uh, the evidence, to my mind, was fabricated. His position was, well, look, uh, quite simply, I stopped murders. If there was a murder committed, I found them. I stopped robbery. Okay, I took a bit of money on the side, but so what? What is more important is my beat was well behaved. And so the fellow could never really accept that he'd behave in a club fashion. The government was forced to create an independent graft fighting unit because the police couldn't be trusted. Sir Jack Cater became the first head of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. We knew where a lot of corruption was. And so um, we, it wasn't a question of, of uh, um, picking up and picking on on the police force. It was those who were being corrupt whom we attacked. Hundreds of officers were arrested and the police rioted. To prevent a mutiny, the government granted an amnesty. We certainly were alarmed, yes. It wasn't very clear what you can do if a force of 25,000 people, all armed, uh, cease to enforce the law. Hong Kong's system could not have continued to operate with that level of corruption. It just couldn't. Hong Kong was moving from a developing economy into a developed economy. And developed economies and high levels of corruption do not go well together. But recent figures show corruption in the civil service rose in the first part of 1997. Hong Kong's whole, the Hong Kong civil service is clean. But in every major department, you are bound to have somebody who might be tempted to break the law. And corruption is not something you can uh, remove 100%. We can only try to reduce corruption to a minimum. In a recent case, in late 1996, the ICAC smashed an alleged vehicle smuggling ring. Investigators believe customs officers were involved in a scheme to smuggle vans into China. ICAC veterans believe, with Hong Kong a part of China, this type of cross-border crime is now the agency's biggest challenge. I think the, the difference in my day was that uh, we saw a little crime in China itself. That came with the opening up of, of, of China. 
Um, but it seems to me that um, there is a lot of corruption in Guangdong now. The ICAC has become a source of fear and pride in the Hong Kong civil service, but it's now fighting a possible name change. The future SAR government wants to remove the word independent from its title, but even the agency's director fears losing the eye may lead many to believe the group is losing its teeth.